Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we were left with this. Uh, we did our first example looking for internal shear forces and internal bending moments. And we actually picked a point here on this beam, point C, and we calculated the internal shear and the internal moment. And we found the magnitude of the internal shear at point C to be 5 kilonewtons. And we found the magnitude of the internal moment at point C to be 10 kilonewtons. But depending on which side we looked at it, whether or not, because uh, we had passed through this virtual cut here, and if we were looking on the left-hand side, the, the orientation of our shear and moment were opposite to that of uh, when we were looking at the right-hand side. Now, this is totally normal and what we should expect, because if you imagine these pieces, like in real life, they're not actually cut and separated, but if we imagine that they are, the left-hand side and the right-hand side of that cut one of them is kind of pushing and the other one is pulling. They're basically just creating equal and opposite uh, forces here or moments um, that obviously we have to have, they have the same magnitude at that exact point, but that's why we're getting the different orientations. Now, we did talk about in the last video how we, were, we are going to draw shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. Um, but when we plot something, when we plot something in a diagram, we actually need to have to kind of define a positive and a negative uh, for the graph to make sense. But here, depending on which side we're looking at, we're saying, well, sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. So how do you go ahead and define something to be a positive sense? Well, we do have a sign convention for dealing with virtual cuts and internal shear forces and moments, and it's just like this. So if we have a section of a beam and the virtual cut is on the right-hand side, then if we find a shear force that's pointing down, we define that as positive. If we have a bending moment, an internal moment that is curving uh, counterclockwise, then we consider that positive. And if we have an axial force that would induce uh, a tension, then we would consider that positive. And then same thing on the opposite side. If we're looking at a virtual cut that's on the left-hand side of a section or of a beam or, or a member, I guess, then if we have a shear force that's pointing upwards, we consider that to be positive. Um, a, a, a clockwise moment we consider to be positive and it also for, uh, for an axial force that's inducing tension we consider that to be positive. Now you'll notice that these are just complete opposites of each other but we do that so in a situation like this when we actually find the, the magnitude of, of a, let's say the shear force here at point C it's 5 kilonewtons we find it to be 5 in both cases but we have it with opposite uh, opposite directions here so on this case, we uh, uh, on the left-hand side, we found it to be pointing down, and then on the right-hand side, we found it to be pointing up. So if we map that to our sign convention here, well, uh, on the left-hand side, when the, when the virtual cut is actually well on the right-hand side of, of the member, and it's pointing down, we call that a positive shear. And in this situation, where the virtual cut's on the left-hand side, like this, and the shear is pointing up, then we also call that positive. So that's important to us when we go and map or when we go and plot this on our shear force diagram because now no matter which way we look at this from either side, we're actually finding the same value. In this case, it'll be positive 5 kilonewtons. There's another way that you can draw this if you don't like having the two beams separated out. Actually, what I, what I found myself usually doing um, is I just I combine them into one drawing like this. So. If I'm looking, if this is the member and the cut is on the right-hand side, then these are my positive, uh, these are my positive directions or senses. And if I'm looking at the any member and the virtual cuts on the left-hand side, these are the positive directions. All right, so let's use what we know now, and we'll plot our first shear force diagram and bending moment diagram based off of the free body diagram of this member. So we already have one point. We did know the shear force at point C. So if we come up here and look at the shear force at point C, it was five, the magnitude was five kilonewtons. And when the cut was on the right hand side, like this, it was, uh, that was in the positive sense. So we know the shear force is five kilonewtons uh, at point C. Now, if we, we talked about looking at this where if we shortened if, if, we, if we picked a point that was uh, right here, for example, uh, well, V would just be moved over here, and V would still have to be 5 kilonewtons to cancel that out. V, if, we, if we cut a section here, V would still have to be 5 kilonewtons, and that would be true all the way up until just on the left side of this. So we can see that, that the shear force is going to be a constant positive 5 kilonewtons up until 
we get to write to this discontinuity that's going to happen here where we have an applied point load. So this is 5. Now if we draw the free body diagram of the beam, so we have our reaction here was 5 kilonewtons and then uh, 15 kilonewtons, so we're going just on the left, or just past this point, so 15 kilonewtons, and then we have our, our cut there. Well then if we draw on a shear, obviously the shear is going to have to point up and it's going to have to be uh, V is equal to 10 kilonewtons in magnitude, but it's pointing up on the right hand side of a member, so that means it has a negative sense, so this basically drops down to, to negative 10 here. And then if we continued this on, it doesn't matter how long this is for the shear, as long as we, as, uh, as long as we come up to this point, because we're not crossing any other points here on the free body diagram. There we go, there it is. Uh, so if we cut here, it's going to be, the shear will be 10 kilonewtons. If we cut here, the shear will be 10. If we cut here and here, and those will all be in the negative. So the, the shear force actually is stays negative 10 for the rest of the way and just like that. Now for the bending moment diagram, uh, we calculated up here that the bending moment at point C was 10 kilonewton meters and it was that positive or it was it was this counterclockwise here when the virtual cuts on the right and if we map that to our sign convention that was positive. So we already know one point that we have 10 kilonewton meters um, somewhere on our bending moment diagram and you know what maybe I'll just, I'll just bring this down a little bit so we have some more space to work with just like that so at point C let's just let's just say this is is 10 kilonewtons and we know it's positive well then if you also remember we'll come back up here yeah we'll just draw a new one it's okay um, so that was coming from we have the cut like that we have the five kilonewtons and then we had the 5 kilonewton shear force pushing down, just like that. So that was V equals 5 kilonewtons. And where this distance was equal to 2 meters, um, we were getting the five, uh, 5 times 2, and that was giving us our 10, uh, our 10 kilonewton meters. Well, if this distance is 1 meter, so if we're just checking this part, then 1 times 5, we're going to have a bending moment of of five kilonewton meters there. If we went over to three meters, let's, uh, oops, five. If we went over to three and we just swapped this out for three meters, then five times three, that force couple times the distance between them is going to bring us up to 15. And if we went just to the very left hand side of this, which is basically we are approaching four meters. Uh, we would just have this as 4, and 4 times 5, we would be getting 20. So we're seeing this linear change in the bending moment as we go up to this, this point load here. Now, if we, if we go just to the other side of the point load, um, so we draw a new sort of free body diagram here, uh, we have that five, kil uh, 5 kilonewtons pressing up, and then somewhere along the line we'll have the 4 meter span, so like four meters, and then we have this 15 kilonewtons pressing down. Then we'll look at our shear force here, and we're going to have to have this 10 kilonewton shear force pressing up, but now what we want to do is, the, now when we go to find the moments here, we can actually draw the, the, we can do the moment balance here, or do the sum of moments. So let's say that uh, for the point here, uh, let's say that this is one meter over. Our moment balance will be the sum of moments, and we'll, uh, we'll say about point A. So we have 15 times 4, um, and we also have to draw on our moment here. We'll always draw it in the positive sense, and so if we find, if we find it to, to be negative, we'll know it's the opposite. So we have 15 times 4 is going to be equal to 10 times 5 plus our moment, our internal moment here, and so we have 15 times 4, that's 60 minus 50, so we're going to get mo our moment here is equal to 10, and it's important to notice that that's a positive 10, so that means that we're getting it on the positive side, where this is really, this is positive and negative, and this is positive and negative, like you would expect, then we get it here, 
at 5 meters, it is also equal to 10. Now, if we looked at just if we looked at this point from the other side, like that, we know that we have that reaction here of 10, uh, 10 kilonewtons, and then we would have to have the shear force going down at 10, and we'd also have our internal moment, like that. And the moment, in order to counteract this uh, this force couple, which is one meter, right? Because this this distance from here to here is one meter. Uh, this would just be 10 times one, so the moment here would be positive 10 kilonewton meters, and we're getting that exact same number. So actually, no matter which way we look at it, we'll get that positive value. And uh, that's why this convention is really important, that we're able to switch from side to side, uh, and it doesn't matter which side of the cut we're looking at, uh, it, we still get the same values here. Um, if we if we tended this to zero, to this, this distance to be zero, obviously our moment would apply, uh, the, the force couple would uh, would tend to zero, and the internal moment would tend to zero, so we get that down there at zero. And if we went increase this to two, we could go the other way, and it would up increase up to 20. So we see that we're getting that nice continuous um, plot for our bending moment diagram. All right, so I will uh, I will see you guys in the next video, and we will do some more practice with drawing more bending moment diagrams and shear force diagrams.